Start game now. Welcome, retro fans, to another edition of the No Sword Gamer. I'm joined by Kevin of Loxley. Hey, Kevin, what you got for me today? Oh, well, it looks like it's F-22 Interceptor, Advanced Tactical Fighter for your Sega Genesis system. A cool little graphic there of a plane that's half blueprint, because at the time this was made, the uh, plane was still in development. And we got some nice screenshots on the back with total air superiority. So yeah, it looks pretty good so far. Let's pop it open, take a look at the cartridge. And it's your standard EA cartridge with the yellow tab of mystery. And it's, it's a oh, blockbuster. Kevin, did you forget to return this? Oh man, I wonder what the late fee on this thing's going to be. Okay, well, as I look into that, let's go ahead and go to the game footage and find out if F-22 Interceptor is a good game or not. Man, I hope that's not too bad. F-22 Interceptor is from 1991 and made by Electronic Arts, and it is a flight simulator game. It claims to have over a hundred smaller missions, and they are spread out over several larger campaigns, so every campaign contains several missions. The campaigns are based on countries, so you have like an American campaign, Iraq, Korea, and Russian as well. There is a password system to save your game so you do not have to complete a whole campaign in order to save your game. There are mission objectives in every mission. Some of them are just destroy all the other enemy fighters. There's other enemy airplanes that are out to attack you or to attack the ground artillery or even enemy ground bases or sometimes a mixture of all those. Occasionally, you will need to refuel during the game and there's two ways you standardly do it. One is you can refuel in mid-air, which is pretty cool in concept and can be either very simple or very difficult to do. If your plane happens to be in direct line of the air fueler, you can just go straight ahead, just gently pressing the acceleration in order to get to the refuel pump that's kind of dangling out there. Just don't go too fast or you'll bump into them and explode. Or it can also involve landing. Now landing is a little bit trickier. It's the same kind of basic deal where if you're lined up when it starts just right, it's kind of easy. But once you get off course, it takes quite a bit of finagling to get back onto it. And you have to be very careful because one time I blew up landing just because I landed just a little slightly too soon. Not something that made sense, but yes, you have to be very careful when it comes to landing. You do get unlimited continues in this game, so there, that's a good thing, isn't it? Um, your basic controls are as follows. You have one button for the thrusters to accelerate your jet. You have uh, another button that selects, that uh, actually fires the selected missile because you have different kind of missiles you can select, and you have a machine gun button. So basically A was thrusters, B was the missiles, and C was machine gun, but I believe you can alter that if you like. If you want to change the missiles that you have, you actually have to push the start and A button simultaneously in order to switch them on the fly, or you can hit the start menu to bring up all sorts of different kind of functions and displays. Uh, one thing you can do when you hit the start button, you go into the display screen, is you can change your display. You can go from a behind the back kind of view, from a just, you know, what's in front of you kind of view, or your standard cockpit view as well. It also tells you about the cheats. That's right, this game actually tells you how to cheat when you hit the start button, but you're probably going to need it because the chances are you will run out of ammunition all the time you're going to need to use the cheats to put more missiles on in mid-flight because otherwise you'll be stuck with things to destroy and nothing to destroy them with. This happened to me several times during the game and I'm sorry my chaff is not going to destroy anything. Now I must admit that this game is groundbreaking in many different ways. First of all, they based this game on a, on a plane on the F-22 Raptor that had not even been test flown yet. It wouldn't have even been test flown until about six years later. So they're definitely way ahead of the curve when it comes to putting a plane in the air, at least virtually speaking. Also, it's polygonal based, which is something you don't think about on the Sega Genesis as using polygons because most systems during this time did not use polygons or used a special chip in, in order to pull it off. But this one used polygons even though they are very limited what they can do. But it does give you several different camera angles at times and it can kind of move on the fly. For instance, if you blow up something, sometimes you'll see the, the missile on a path 
going right towards the target. It, it kind of breaks from the plane and shows you the missile perspective, which was kind of cool, especially I can imagine it being cool back when it first came out. There's also times where you will actually guide the missiles. Some of the missiles are guided missiles where once you fire it, it goes again to kind of a first person missile perspective and you control the missile as you try and hit the target. Now this took a lot of uh, timing and it was very difficult to do, but I did end up getting it down and I felt like I really accomplished something when I finally blew up something using the guided missiles. Now the graphics in the game are very blocky as again I said this is an early polygonal game and it's basically what you would ex expect and it's also hard to discern from a distance what your enemies are. Now you do have like a little screen on the bottom of your cockpit view that shows you kind of a zoomed in feature but from the distance you, it just looks like a blob and it's kind of hard to tell if it's a building or a tank that you're flying towards. The sound and the music is pretty standard. The music kind of reminds me of an old computer game. It just kind of loops around and the sounds do what they're supposed to do. So nothing fancy there. It is a pretty family friendly game. It is a kind of a war based uh, fighter game and it does have a difficulty curve that's going to put it out of the reach of young children. But what's kind of interesting is whenever you blow up something, any enemies, not only is there no blood, but every enemy seems to parachute out of their jet. So yeah, it's kind of like the A-Team where there's bullets flying everywhere, but no one gets hurt so there you go uh, kind of family friendly in that regard on ebay this game is dirt cheap it goes for the low price of about four dollars or less shipped and typically if a game goes for about four dollars that means the seller is going to make about a buck after they pay for the shipping and all the fees that ebay charges uh, complete copies were also cheap as well. I saw complete copies going for just five bucks and they did re-release this game in a cardboard box as well and that I saw a complete one go for about eight bucks probably because it's a little bit rare and there are some people who uh, like to collect all the cardboard box games. So it's very cheap, especially when you consider that the real F2 Raptor would cost you about $150 million, except that that would be illegal for the common citizen to buy. So unless it is 1996 and you are doing the Pepsi point challenge and you have 7 million points to buy a Harrier jet, you probably won't be able to get an air fighter anytime soon. Unless that was just a joke. If that's a joke, I'm going to sue you, Pepsi. So overall, what did I think of this game? Well, it's kind of interesting when I was doing some research on this game. I was looking up some reviews, and it looked like initial reviews for the game were actually pretty good. Some people saying it was the best flight simulator or fighter simulator to arrive up to that point on a home console. But when I looked at some modern reviews, I saw some people calling it just a terrible, terrible game. When I first played it, I kind of went with the latter. I was like, man, this game is just really hard to control it is. The frame rate is really, really bad, and it's kind of to be expected from an early polygonal game. So there's a very big learning curve in kind of getting a hold of the controls because there's a little bit of delay when you hit right or left. And what happens a lot, at least initially, is that you overcompensate a lot because you don't have the touch. But after a while, I started getting the touch of the game, and I actually started to enjoy the game. Believe it or not, I actually found this to be quite enjoyable in the end to the point where I was able to play through a whole mission and have some fun. And it got to a point where when I did things that should be simple, like refueling or landing or shooting one of those guided missiles, every time I did one of those, I felt like I accomplished something big because I overcame the bad controls. Yeah, the controls are a bit of an issue, but once you get a hold of them, it's actually kind of entertaining. So this is a kind of game where I wouldn't suggest you go out of your way, but if you like uh, flight simulators like this, this is kind of the opposite of an afterburner type game where you're just shooting non-stop. This is more of the careful kind of take your time and try and get right in right position kind of game. If this kind of game appeals to you, what I would suggest is either look for it very cheap, like a buck at a thrift store at a garage sale or something, or look for it in probably a lot of games on something like eBay's. I'm sure that a lot of these are, are kind of spread into lots of games and it shouldn't cost you too much. Uh, money at all. So it's not going to be a very highly ranked game. It's I've, I've reviewed uh, several good games, you know, like Castle of Illusions and General Chaos, but it's definitely better than Bubsy. And I would put it well ahead of Bubsy, but kind of well below General Chaos. So it's going to be right there my number six position. Hey, I want to thank you for giving me a little part of your day. If you like videos like this, why don't you go ahead and click the like button. You can also subscribe as well. That really encourages YouTubers such as myself. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Just go to either one and search for the no Swear Gamer. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you right here on the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.